I am coming to you today from Cobb County Fire Station 19. When we're talking about STEM, you, th you think of a lot of things like computers and drones and all kinds of engineering, but did you realize there's a ton of STEM applications in a fire truck? Let's go inside and take a look. Let's watch as they raise the ladder. The first thing they need to do is to put the stabilizers out to make sure that the truck doesn't move while they're raising the ladder. There's a firefighter on either side using the controls to bring the stabilizers out simultaneously. Once in place, then they can go and actually start raising the ladder to its full height. Since the truck had a call, let's take a look at the engine. Hey guys, I'm Johnny. Uh, I'm a firefighter at Cobb County Station 19, and this is our pumper, our engine. Um, and all these gauges help us manage how much water is going in and out of this truck uh, to our fire hoses and to our nozzles to put out the fires in the houses. Um, we carry 750 gallons of water on this thing, but the pump, if we hook it up to a hydrant, uh, is capable of doing 1,500 gallons per minute. So it can fill up your average swimming pool in you know, probably 10 or 15 minutes. It, it's a lot of water, a lot at once, and it's very powerful. It's something that uh, usually takes a couple of us to hold on to or it'll, it'll get away from us if you ever seen the little rascals and send you flying all over the place. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. But uh, as you can see, there's a lot of math involved in what we do. Um, when you want to drive this, you have to memorize what all these gauges do, what all these numbers mean, and you have to balance the math out. You have to make sure these things and these things add up right to make sure you're not running out of water, make sure you're not overpressurizing a line that might have too much pressure and knock somebody back and hurt them or something like that. Um, and that's how we manage uh, how much water's coming out of this stuff. So, So 
this is where we keep um, all of our driver's gear, which is me today, and our toolboxes, and a lot of adapters. Um, just because we never know which direction we're gonna be going, if we're gonna be driving towards the fire hydrant, or dropping hose and driving away from the fire hydrant, or meeting up with another fire truck halfway between, so we have to do the math and figure out if we're gonna need male or female hose connections, and what size that truck has, it varies from place to place. Uh, in this one, we have some uh, some cones. We set these up on the interstate wrecks uh, to make sure that people see us and get out of the lane, keep us safe on the, the highway accidents. And some other adapters. To These are to hook up to a building sprinkler system so that we can pump extra water to the sprinkler and standpipe systems. Uh, and we have some extra nozzles, depending on what we're doing. Um, this one's kind of fun. This is called a distributor nozzle. And we've pretty much never get to use these, but they spin when you put water to them and it basically looks like a giant sprinkler of death. <laughs> Pretend you're at a water park. We have a couple different high-rise packs that we carry with us to, uh, to up to high-rise fires if we need to, um, basically if we need to fight fire at the top of a hotel or something like that. Um, but we keep a thousand feet of this big, huge yellow line. This is what we call LDH or five inch hose. Um, we can flow a couple thousand gallons through that and it basically makes a, like an above ground water main. Um, and we have a couple other different kind of hose lines. This is the, the big guy right here. This is our two and a half. That'll flow uh, up to about 326 or 350, depending on the nozzle tip, uh, gallons per minute out of that guy. And that's, that's, that's a hefty one. Sometimes it takes a couple people to hold on to. Right now, Ben's pulling 150 gallons per minute of water out of that nozzle tip. It's about 15 or 20 times more than that a garden hose. Um, but that's what we use to fight really good fire. This is our medical compartment. Um, we keep a heart monitor and IVs and oxygen and all sorts of medical supplies, first aid kits, a uh, bunch of different kind of medicines. And we have basically kind of the beginnings of like a small mobile emergency room so that no matter what's going on with you, we can usually uh, figure it out and patch you up and, and keep you safe and get you to the hospital, get you in the ambulance. Um, let's see. This is our tool compartment where we keep our fire axes, sledgehammer. This is everybody's favorite tool. It's called a halligan tool or a halligan bar. And we use this for forcing doors open with and prying our way into things and basically breaking stuff. This is one of our favorite tools. And we keep a couple of uh, sets of uh, uh, chain breakers and uh, you know stuff like that. This is a fun compartment. This is where we keep our saws and our generator. We keep a couple different kinds of saws. This is one that you guys have probably seen before. It's just your typical nice commercial chainsaw. And we use this for cutting up trees when they fall on the roadway. But we also train to use these up on top of roofs, uh, rooftops on houses when they catch on fire to open up a vent hole to get all the smoke out as quickly as possible so that we can get to people and drag them to safety. Um, so that's something we would do with that and this basically does the same thing except for we can go through uh, Metal roofs with it uh, and we can also cut open You know if there's a car fire or something like that This will cut right through a car and open it up so that we can extinguish it fully What else do we have? This is uh, one of our other most important firefighting tools um, some people call it a pipe pole. This version is called a New York hook. And basically what we do with these is we can pry with it to get all the way into, into a building if we need to. But typically what we use these for is uh, we stick these up in the ceiling and yank down the sheetrock in case the attic is on fire. That way we can open up a nice hole and take those hose lines and squirt a bunch of water up in the attic to put the fire out. They're very, very handy. All right, so I see you have a laptop in here, all the rest of your gear, 
Yep. And then you guys wear um, headphones and stuff when you're driving? We do. These are a relatively new addition. Um, it's very, very loud in here, especially with the siren going and the engine's really loud. So it's nice to have these so we can hear each other and just talk without screaming at the top of our lungs. But uh, this is definitely the most fun seat in the house. Are you ready? Hey guys, this is a thermal imaging camera. And this camera is used to find missing people, dogs, cats, inside of house fires. Because when we go in the fires, we can't see anything in the smoke, so we use this as our vision. We're gonna take you guys inside and turn off the lights and show you just how we can use this tool or this technology to be able to search for people. Okay, so now we're inside. You can see what the camera looks like here. So just focus here on this part and uh, you're gonna get to see what it looks like. Okay, go ahead, turn off lights. Okay, so you can see me here in the dark. But a failure to the technology is when you get covered up by something. All right, so one of the problems with the technology, all technology does have some failures, so this technology failure is that if there's a cover it only reads the heat signature so it's reading my body heat so if I cover it up this is just a coat that I'm covering myself with you can see that it's blocked out so we still have to put our hands in search beds in case somebody's underneath covers that's a wrap for today thank you to everyone at fire station 19 for helping us get a better idea of the stem tools and equipment that are included in a fire truck and an engine these are things that they use to help do their jobs more effectively and help to keep us safe.